Matthew, I wanted to answer the various questions you presented in your video titled Irreducible Complexity is False because I lined these eyes up. Not only because I tried to defend and prove evolution and I think you're wrong, but because I don't think, considering the technical and time-consuming manner of Quality of Soup's videos, that he will be responding to you anytime soon, if ever. The answer here is that your question is a fallacy of presupposition since your question presupposes that evolution can only work by stepwise addition of parts. That is incorrect. Evolution also works by changing existing parts, co-opting existing parts, or removing them. So the issue of a specific function requiring several parts is not a problem for evolution. The ability of a given cell to be sensitive to light comes from a natural selection process that selects such an ability because of the survival advantage that being sensitive to various intensities of light produces. So in order to adapt slash evolve that trait, the cell must be able to receive incoming information from the environment and process it. So what came first is the ability of the organism to translate information from the environment into some useful information. The light sensitive cells come second. Here, you make the same blunder that Dr. Behe makes in assuming that evolution only works by stepwise addition of parts. Evolution also works by removing parts, changing existing parts, or co-opting existing parts for a new function. So your claim that evolution has no mechanism which can explain the origin of systems which require several parts in order to work is based on your ignorance of the fact that when a system is irreducibly complex, this doesn't mean it was designed by mind or by God. This simply means that the system did not evolve by the addition of single parts with no change in function. The answer here is that the functional pathway is evolution in combination with cell signaling. Cell signaling allows a cell or biological system to receive and process input from its environment and thus use that input to develop and therefore adapt and evolve based on the input it receives and its attempts to maximize efficiency and survival. Each step-by-step -step evolution of the eye is an adaptation from a prior state of efficiency and function to a greater state of efficiency and function that is conducive to maximizing a cell or organism's ability to survive. And here, this is a bold blunder on your part, since evolution can explain this, as long as one is not ignorant of the fact that evolution is not restricted to just a stepwise addition of parts. And you didn't even say it right. It's not a single step that requires several parts to work, but a single function that requires several parts to work. In other words, more than two evolutionary steps would have to be skipped to achieve resistance, which means evolution can't do it. This is how successful antibiotics are made. When more than two evolutionary steps are required for a function, such as to build resistance to an antibiotic, the enzyme is out of luck evolution cannot accomplish this. The face of the cliff may be only two or three mutations high, but even that is too much for evolution. 